Are you having trouble deep squatting like Rosh is right now? I think a lot of people forget about this hidden gem that you can unlock your deep squat if you take a look at your shin bone motion as well as your foot and ankle motion. Let's dive into it. Dr. Craig here from the Prehab Guys. I have a Rosh here. He's going to be a great model. We're going to be going over the deep squat assessment in regards to shin bone as well as foot and ankle range of motion. So just a disclaimer, the deep squat, there's a lot of variables and a lot of factors that go into it, but we're gonna be looking at three specific motions as well as showing you two exercises that you can do to improve shin bone as well as foot and ankle range of motion, as typically that's a common limiting factor with the deep squat. So Arash, just to start, I'm gonna have you put your feet together like this, and then facing forward, 12 o'clock, we're gonna have a Rosh deep squat here. So just lower down as far as you can, and I want you to do this a few times. So with his feet together, he's forced to go into ankle dorsiflexion. There's no way to get out of it. Otherwise, if his feet were like shoulder width apart, he'd be able to cheat. I'm watching are his heels lifting up, and I'm asking him, how does it feel? Does it feel uh, stiff anywhere? Stiff, my ankle is okay. limited there for sure. So then a quick thing that we can manipulate is let's have you do it on this elevated surface here. What the elevated surface does, basically we're getting his heels lifted up. So he's in plantar flexion. And now because of that, he has more ankle dorsiflexion to work with because he's already at a negative, if that makes sense. This is also going to influence the amount of hip range of motion he goes through as well and knee flexion. but. If his deep squat improves and it feels better, okay, we can at least roll in the ankle. We can't necessarily roll it out yet. How does it feel? Any different? Easy, no cool. restriction. So that was easier. It's like, okay, the ankle's probably feeding into it. So now let's even take a little bit deep diver, a uh, deep dive looking at the foot and ankle. So Arash, I'm gonna have you come over heel, come over here, <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna get set up just like this. You're gonna have your toe touching your heel. We're gonna look at it on both sides. I'm gonna be a stickler about this. Arash, make sure that your back foot like this is definitely facing 12 o'clock. Most of the time people are gonna cheat and let their foot rotate out. We're gonna be a stickler about this. We want toe heel touching and we want it facing 12 o'clock, if not rotated in a little bit. Now I'm gonna tell Arash, just let this knee of the back leg go forward as far as it can while keeping this heel under the ground. Do that a few times. So we're just appreciating it. Actually, let's have the cam, um, you can stay there, Arash, switch sides so that we can show what we're looking for with the camera. Again, 12 o'clock, exactly. So we're taking a look at how far does this knee go forward with this heel down on the ground? And then how does it feel side to side? Uh, about the same. Okay. Does one side feel stiffer than the other? Maybe this right side. Okay, so then maybe you guys can see on the camera better than I can if I were to watch on the side, but maybe this right knee isn't getting as far forward compared to the left side. So now we're thinking, okay, maybe his right ankle is a little bit more limited going into dorsiflexion, that knee going over the toe on the right compared to the left. So those are two tests that you can start with. Now we're gonna come over here, and now we're gonna look at this shin bone rotation. So. What we know is when we deep squat, when the foot is connected with the ground, there's some coupled motions that happen. So with this foot back, let's just demonstrate it, the knee comes forward, the shin bone needs to actually rotate in, the arch is gonna collapse a little bit. It's called foot pronation, and it's coupled with tibial internal rotation. How do we assess tibial rotation? We're gonna have a Rosh seated here. We're gonna have the heels right under the knee, and now Arash, keeping this still, don't let your thighs move. Don't let them come in or out. I just want you to rotate both feet out as far as you can. And now rotate in as far as you can. And now I'm just gonna watch this. So keep going. Now, if you wanna bring the video over this way, then we can get an appreciation for how well he moves. And again, I want those heels directly under the knee. When we rotate out, we should get at least 40 degrees, give or take. And then when we come in, we're taking a look at how far can he come in. Can you even do it with your feet just sliding on the ground? Good. Then we're looking for at least 20 degrees coming in. So ready? Keep going, go out. Out looks pretty good. Maybe he has a little bit more on the left compared to the right. And now coming in, also pretty even. I mean, we could hairline it if we want. We could be a real stickler. Keep going. 
but this actually looks pretty good. It's not too uncommon for this internal rotation to be limited, especially if you're having trouble with the deep squat and you're feeling issues in your shin bone and your foot and ankle. We know that Arash's dorsiflexion on the right may be a little bit limited. And also what comes with that is that internal rotation. So now we're gonna work on this. We're gonna tackle the shin bone as well as the foot and ankle bone. So Arash, let's do these tibial cars. So Arash is gonna hug his thigh behind his knee. We don't want it too high because he's gonna kick his leg straight. And then this hamstring length may be limiting that. So I want him to keep his knee down. And now we're gonna do these tibial cars. So Arash, you can imagine this shin bone, this tibial tuberosity, this bony thing here, you want this rotating out as far as it can, and then you want it rotating in as far as it can. So Arash is gonna rotate out as far as it can. He's gonna kick it straight. He's gonna keep it rotated out. Bends as far as you can, keep it rotated out. Now rotate it in, kick out, keep it rotated in. Feel that quad shake, <laughs> come on back down. It's okay for the foot and ankle to move. That's actually gonna drive that tibial rotation that we're looking for. So I want you to do five, where we go out, rotate in, kick out, perfect. Go out, kick out, come back in, rotate in, repeat. Let's do one more each side, perfect. You're gonna feel all the muscles in front of your shin working. You're gonna feel your calf working. You're gonna feel these muscles down here by the foot and ankle working. All that's totally normal. So that's working on your tibial rotation. Now let's have you stand up. Now let's get your foot set up on the bench. Now we're gonna work on this ankle dorsiflexion range of motion. However, I talked about this earlier. Just let your knee drive forward, Arash. There's a lot of movements that are happening. There's a lot of moving parts. As he comes down, his arch is going to drop a little bit. That's normal his talus bone and his foot and ankle, that's gonna come down. His navicular, all the foot bones are sort of working down and in, and his tibia is rotating in. So Rosh is being a really good model right now because I told him what to do before we did this video, where he's focused on letting this shin bone rotate in. His hip is having to come out. So let's even face the camera so that people can get an appreciation for this. But Arash is keeping that heel down and he's driving everything in while letting that knee go forward. Does this feel okay? Mm -hmm. Arash can even have his hand set up like this where he's helping rotate it in. Try that out, see how it feels. Again, don't cause pain with this. Don't cause any issue. This is supposed to feel good and you should be feeling a stretch maybe in your calf and in your shin bone area. And now he could do that, but we can also focus on just going straight forward. And then he can lean into it. He can do over pressure. I'm gonna be a stickler and say, really try to keep your heel flat on the ground. And then let's even do going out. So sort of lead that knee over that pinky toe. And then he can even feel sort of what's happening with the shin bone here. How's this feel on your foot and ankle and your shin? I feel it in my ankle. In the front, yeah. pinching? Um, deep, deep in there deep in there. So then maybe I would want him to change it up a little bit. I don't want him to have too much pinching and I don't want you to have a ton of pinching. So change it up. Maybe don't go as far out wide and maybe come forward, come back in. Don't worry so much about the rotation now. Let's just worry about going straight forward and tell me how that feels on your ankle. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Cool. So then Arash would do this. You can spend time on this. I like to say really focus on getting that knee forward, rotating that shin bone in and maybe spend one to two minutes doing this, but say that you felt limited just going forward or going out to the side. I got a rush hopping all around over here. Find what feels limited and groove that motion. Last but not least, let's come back to the deep squat. So let's do feet together. Let's just see if it feels any different. Be honest for the camera, please. <laughs> and let's just see. So now I don't wanna block the camera but I can just watch the squat. Is he keeping his heels flat on the ground? How well is he able to rotate and move from his shin bones? How far forward are his knees going over his toes? How does it feel? Um, easier on the right side, because I think okay. work more on the right <laughs> side than the left, but uh, still a little restricted. Okay, so don't forget to do this on both sides, but his right side feels a little bit better. That's to be expected because we just spend time working on that. Yeah. So, Trying this stuff out, 
you know the three movements that you got to check out. You know the uh, treatments that you can do for yourself. So working on that shin bone rotation, working on the knees over toes. And then, yeah, check out that deep squat. And then if it doesn't get any better, maybe it's not the shin bone and the foot and ankle, but I have no doubt that your deeper squat will feel better if you do this stuff. So please comment, give it a thumbs up, like it, tell us what you want to see more of, and then uh, I'll make a rush to do some more movements for you.